السلام عليكم دي محاضرة كده بسيطة وصغيرة ومبسطة جدا عن الباثولوجي of corneal graft rejection this is not supposed to be a clinical talk خالص ولا clinical presentation and it's not about the clinical signs and symptoms of corneal graft rejection it's about the basic sciences behind the graft rejection namely the pathology بالذاتي Okay. The frequency of the graft rejection. Frequency of graft rejection here, مختلفة. It's very, very different across the board. في كل literature, the studies that tackled the قصة دي وقفت من سنين طويلة جدا. There are only few studies, and they have stopped in the early 2000. I think 2004. دي كانت آخر حاجة أنا قدرت أوصلها يعني. About the frequency of graft rejection. Definition of graft rejection actually has to be revised. Then, if we're talking about any bout of uh, immunological allograft rejection that has been uh, controlled, um, this may mount up to even 18% for bad. I mean, studies can after study tamil comprehensive al hayya ala retrospective ala hundreds of eyes. Yani can it that harm in their dua? Tamil for nothing can with that can senat tisar sain. إنما لو إحنا بنتكلم على ال ال وده ودي زي ما حضراتكم شايفين برسنتج عالية جدا بس ده البرسنتج that includes patients that have had a bout of slight rejection وخدوا treatment وبعدين بقوا كويسين وزي الفل فا these are if you would include these patients as well then you will have a high incidence up to 18 percent but if you do, if you are considering patients that had a strong graft rejection that led eventually to graft failure ده دول يعني بيبقوا قليلين وكل ال studies ما قال they did not report more than 10% خالص even in clinical practice يعني and the experience over the years الحقيقة ما طلعتش ان انا انا I don't see graft rejections more than 5 to 10% but every now and then we do have a patient that had a penetrating keratoplasty um, in spite of penetrating keratoplasty being you know, the most successful solid organ transplantation in the whole body, and then every now and then we find activity against the graft, and uh, fortunately enough, we can control this uh, activity as well. So it is a nightmare. It is a nightmare. Any any corneal surgeon who is doing corneal transplants, um, although um, lamellar corneal transplantation is becoming more and more popular now, um, um, no, we we do need to do penetrating keratoplasty every now and then, and um, um, in these patients you do expect some sort of activity. So you should know exactly the pathology behind this, and when you know the pathology, then you can manage much much more efficiently. وهنعرف ليه دلوقتي حالا. Important questions now. What are the risk factors for graft rejection? ايه الميكانيزم بتاع graft rejection? What is the clinical picture of graft rejection although this is not the subject of, of this uh, presentation? How can we treat rejection again? هنقول بس كلمتين بسرعة جدا جدا عن ال how to treat rejection. But this again, this is not the primary target of this PowerPoint presentation. And what are the advances and future directions in the management of graft rejection? The risk factors for rejection, as I'm sure you've seen, it's a very long, comprehensive risk. The main aim of putting this risk, and I will tell you that not all of them are important as each other. We do have priorities, and one of the very, very important risk factor for graft rejection is corneal vascularization. For example, we all have been classically taught that one of the high risk factors for corneal graft rejection is glaucoma. For example. Ilhail glaucoma is not a risk factor for graft rejection. In other words, it does not stimulate the immune system in the whole or to react with the newly transplanted cornea. 
ولكن الجلاكوما بتقلل ال 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 viability and the long term survival of endothelial cells. These are endothelial cells that come from another person. This person is deceased. Uh, there is, as I'm aware of, Arfin, there is a graft to host. Uh, sorry, uh, um, a graft to preservation time. Um, so these um, endothelial cells have been compromised. They are weak. They have been traumatized. And then you are implanting them in a new environment. Um, so you do hope that the immune mechanism will not recognize these uh, endothelial cells as um, antigenic cells or as cells uh, not originating from the same body. Uh, so these are sick cells that need a good environment until they regain their full activity. When they have uh, an environment of glaucoma or increased intraocular pressure, حاجتين بيحصل. أول حاجة إن the increased intraocular pressure by itself decreases the viability and the uh, the mechanism, the pump mechanisms of the endothelial cell functions. Recently, by it has been shown repeatedly that car carbonic anhydrase inhibitors do affect the pump mechanism of the endothelial cell um, uh, um, uh, endothelial uh, cells el transplanted ma el corneal um, uh, button. وبالتالي بت بتقلل ال transparency of the cornea. This leads to eventually corneal edema and corneal decompensation. And endothelial cell survival is much much lower with the use of carbonic anhydrase inhibitors. But those I'm not sure if these are not these are not true risk factors for corneal graft rejection. These are risk factors for corneal graft failure. فدي حاجة مهمة جدا ان احنا نبقى عارفينها كلينيشنز وتبقوا عارفينها حضراتكم ككانديديتس وانتوا داخلين امتحان باثولوجي فور اكزامبل ان انتوا تبقوا عارفين ايه الباثولوجي ورا كل كلينيكال ساين. فاف يو دو هاف ا ليت كورنيال جرافت فيلير مريض كان كويس وزي الفل ا كورنيال ترانسبلانت ذات هاز سرفايف فور لايك 5 6 10 ييرز اند ذن ات ستارتد تو شو كورنيال ايديما. موست بروبلي ذس سيناريو از نوت ليت ايميونولوجيكال activation against the the antigenic presenting antigen presenting cells of this corneal transplant but is uh, uh, the the it is that the endothelial cells have been decreasing over time decreasing over time and then it, they reached uh, a critical point or a critical value that they cannot sustain um, a good corneal clarity a good corneal transparent transparency and then this cornea will be uh, prone to corneal edema but this is late graft failure late graft failure is very famous in glaucomatous patients but um, uh, corneal vascularization on the other hand is a very strong stimulus for allograft immunological uh, rejection again there's primary graft failure if the, if it is a very traumatic surgery if it is a bad graft low endothelial cell count min al awal khalis the 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 surgery itself was traumatic you touch the endothelial cells several times um, and then you, you put the graft in and the graft remains edematous this is primary graft failure That's, when we're talking about immunological rejection, we're talking about a graft that has been very good, everything's fine, the, 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 the body accepted the graft, and then somehow the immune, the immune system of the patient recognized this graft or recognized cells from this graft as being hostile cells and the immunological response has been triggered. This is called rejection. And then you have on the other end of the spectrum a graft that has been absolutely fantastic for years and years and years, and then the endothelial cells started to decompensate because it, it reached a critical value below which it cannot sustain the uh, the corneal clarity anymore, and this is late graft failure. For this is important, of which of the risk factors are risk factors for are true risk factors for rejection. And which of them are not is not uh, yani, uh, uh, a true risk factor for uh, rejection, but is a risk factor for late uh, graft failure. So, the number one risk factor that we should all look for is corneal vascularization. Um, several uh, uh, different texts or different studies and different textbooks will uh, define the amount of corneal vascularization that is actually uh, uh, can trigger rejection. Uh, more than uh, three clock hours, deep, uh, deep vessels, whatever. But whenever you see a cornea which is heavily vascularized, 
especially if this vascularization is deep, this is bad news. And this is high-risk cornea, and high-risk corneas should be dealt with a little bit different than in, uh, normal uh, corneas if you're, you're going for a transplant. Okay, if you have a history of uveitis, of course, this is a, a sensitized immune system to the ocular tissue. فطبيعي جدا ان هيبقى في الاميون ميكانيزمز والاميون باثويز اوريدي تريجرد اند ذي ار ذير تو تو اكت اف ذير از اني ستيمولس وات سو ايفر فا ذيس ار بيشنتس ذات ار ريلي هاي ريسك فور اميونولوجيكال ريجكشن سيليكون كيراتوباثي اجين ذيس از جرافت فيلير هيستوري اوف جلاكوما بريفيوس جرافت ريجكشن از ا ترو ريسك فاكتور فور جرافت ريجكشن بيكوز ذا اميون ميكانيزم از برايمد ودلوقتي احنا عندنا زي ما حضراتكم هتشوفوا الترو باثولوجي اوف ذا جرافت ريجكشن از از باي مودل One of them is cytotoxic reaction, which is cells against the uh, the transplanted cells, and the other is a humoral immunity, which is antibodies uh, against again uh, the transplanted cells. These antibodies, mogudin, these are there if you have a previous graft rejection. If you do have antibodies against uh, certain antigens, if these new antigens are re-transplanted, uh, then the mechanism is there and ready for action immediately. And the presence of donor epithelium. This is something that I, really was controversial and demon al hajat al al wahed personally ma kanch muqtana biha awi. Until very recently, it was shown zay muhadrat ko hatarafu dilwati in one of the very important antigen presenting cells in the cornea is are the Langerhans cells in the epithelium. The epithelium in the shaklo zarif latif and it's very innocent and uh, and kind. Uh, actually can uh, trigger an immunological reaction and the immunological reaction or the immunological rejection that happens from the epithelium doesn't have to be epithelial rejection and mumkin langhand cells اللي موجودة في الكورنيال باتن اللي حضرتك بتعملها transplantation to trigger a full blown uh, corneal graft uh, rejection If you have a young host age, these are, are relative um, uh, risk factors. Young age, of course, they have a very uh, hyperactive, very sharp uh, immune uh, system. Uh, pregnancy, this is even not a risk factor because no one does a, a coronary transplants during pregnancy. Um, أو uh, post vaccination, post herpetic keratitis, كل الحاجات دي برضو ما هي these are relative uh, risk factors and not true risk factors. The, the major, the major risk factor, the major risk factor for corneal uh, um, uh, immunological uh, rejection is corneal vascularization. This is the very important one. ودي من الحاجات يا جماعة we do expect to hear immediately in in exams if you're um, asked what are the uh, risk factors for corneal uh, Transplant rejection. Our hagelism tell here corneal. The first thing that has to be said is uh, corneal vascularization. Okay. So, as we said, corneal host vascularization is the most important risk factor. If more than two, car again, this is this differs according to the text and according to the studies. There, there have been retrospective studies, but these are oldish studies that were done in the 90s, in the 80s, even in the 70s. If more than two quadrants, rejection rates rise to 20, from 20 to 50%. Deep vessels are more dangerous than we are and should be dealt with before PKP. Some people now use anti-VEGF treatment either in the form of eye drops or subconjunctival injection or, or even intrastromal corneal injection and there have been numerous studies uh, uh, again um, we do not use diathermy anymore because even the probes that, that has the very thin needles that we go inside the cornea to um, diathermize the uh, deep vessels they're, they're not here anymore we cannot find them plus the fact that if you do this you do induce definitely collagen uh, uh, shrinkage and a lot uh, of uh, corneal uh, distortion the tissue that has been distorted when you do a penetrating keratoplasty um, will will result in very bad uh, wound edges but this is not advisable directly well i can in theory what on my door you have to close the vessels that carry the blood and can induce the corneal uh, Rejection.
So the most important risk factor for rejection is vascularization, and the most important risk factor for graft failure is low endothelial cell count, either preoperatively or intraoperatively, or over the years by the Kaplan-Meier curves if the patient is glaucomatous or has a high intraocular pressure. Due to the high intraocular pressure, number one, number two is due to the carbonic anhydrase inhibitors. For example, if you do have a high yeah, fish wet haget kida minal tips and tricks in coronary transplants that people do not do. Uh, one of which, um, and, and they do compromise, uh, they do, uh, they put your graft in danger. In uh, uh, among these things that in these patients you are going to put them on steroids, topical steroids, um, uh, systemic steroids for quite for a short time, and then topical steroids for quite some time. So uh, me personally, I don't use topical steroids, strong steroids like dexamethasone or prednisolone one percent, um, except for like one month or one and a half month. But some people, some very respectable corneal surgeons, do use these uh, medications for quite some time. And when I say quite some time, I mean months and sometimes years. So putting patients on steroids for that long, you do expect that some of them are steroid responders and do have uh, you do have an incidence of steroid-induced glaucoma. Okay, if you do have a, everyone knows that this is not um, um, like uh, a surprise. So a lot of, of of physicians, of surgeons, very respectable surgeons, when they put the the patient on steroids for quite some time, they put the antidote with it. They give the ste the patient from day one uh, carbonic anhydrase inhibitors topically or beta blockers topically, or the very famous combinations like COSOP, for example, Asarga, or any, any of, the, uh, of the combinations that combines a beta blocker with a carbonic anhydrase inhibitor. It has been found, though, that carbonic anhydrase inhibitors do affect the endothelial cell count. You, you will have perfect surgery, you will have total acceptance of the new tissue in, the, um, in, in, in its new place, but with the years, you will be affecting the, the function of the endothelial cells by putting the carbonic anhydrase inhibitors topically. So this is something that is frowned upon in corneal transplants, especially full thickness penetrating cratal. Okay, so what's the mechanism of corneal allograft rejection? Um, it has been classically taught, we, we teach the, the, the students, the medical students, that um, the cornea is avascular, it doesn't have any blood vessels, it doesn't have any lymphatic vessels, and this is why it, is, it, it has very few cells, it is not a very cellular structure compared to other uh, tissues of the body. So that's why um, it is uh, transplanting the cornea is very successful. And this is true. Transplanting the cornea is the most successful solid organ transplantation. And we teach the, the, the students that the, the cornea is, is an immune privileged uh, site. Uh, but is this true? Is this true? Yes, it is. But it's not due to that the cornea does not have blood vessels or lymphatic vessels. It, it, there are other mechanisms that has been shown recently to tell us why the this the cornea is an immune privileged site and and that with with very very minimal treatment we don't put the, these patients on systemic immunosuppressants, for example, except very very ra rarely um, in in these patients. Just with a drop of topical steroids, um, um, more than 90% of them um, uh, will enjoy a very, very accepted corneal graft. And this is not, does not happen in renal transplants and hepatic transplantations or any other solid organ transplantation. In So in the past, it was thought that this is due to the absence of afferent arm of the immune uh, induction, uh, so no lymph drainage or lymph nodes. Recently, it was proven that there, there are lymph uh, nodes uh, affection and there is lymph drainage to the cervical lymph nodes and that they react immunologically by adaptive pathways. But still, we discovered that there is an immune mechanism, there is immune uh, drainage to uh, local lymph nodes 
uh, and uh, and in spite of this uh, again it is it is the most uh, uh, successful solid organ transplantation so let's find out number one what's the mechanism of rejection and why uh, is the cornea really immune So, what's the normal immune response after penetrating keratoplastic? We all know that HLA antigens are determined by genes on the short arm of chromosome number 6. And there are two types of HLA antigens, which are the major um, histocompatibility um, antigens. There's the type 1 and the type 2. Type 1, which is AB and C, not AB only, are expressed on almost all cells of the body. And then the type 2 uh, major histocompatibility antigens are present on specific cells and these cells have been given the name antigen presenting cells so these are the antigen presenting cells okay so these cells this this type 2 hla antigen or the type 2 major histocompatibility antigen is very 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 important in exciting the immune mechanism against the cell that has or has expressed the type 2 HLA uh, antigen this is very very important the, the HLA type 1 antigen which is AB and C is not a very strong stimulus for to, to stimulate the immune mechanism to, to stimulate um, other cells in the uh, in the blood uh, to act against the the invasion in, in, in invasion of cells that has uh, the foreign uh, antigen so these antigens although foreign they are not very strong they are just a, a nuisance or an inconvenience but the type 2 antigens these are very important so so, so Doctors and physicians and scientists have designated a name for, for cells that present the type 2 antigen. So these are the dangerous cells. These are the cells that will call um, for the fight. So these are the cells. Uh, so these type of cells are called antigen presenting cells. And by antigen presenting cells, we mean the type 2 antigen, not the type 1 antigen. Okay. So after penetrating keratoplasty, immune cells recognize the foreign HLA on antigen-presenting cells. And most of the, the antigen that they will recognize is the type 2 or the DR antigens. Okay. Processing of this antigen is carried out in the draining lymph node like any other tissue in the body. This will lead to a lot of things this will this will lead to priming of naive b cells and t cells t cells um, we will we will discuss a lot in uh, about the um, the mechanism about the details of activating uh, t cells because this is the primary response the t cell response is the primary response and actually the cd4 helper cells and the cd8 uh, killer cells they are very important in this mechanism but also activation of b lymphocytes with production of antibodies also happens antibodies and effector t lymphocytes attack the donor hla bearing cells leading to the damage and rejection okay so let's go a little bit deep into the pathology into the immunology into the details of the immune response when you transplant a full thickness uh, corneal transplant okay again again there are two types of hla or the uh, major histocompatibility or mhc antigens the type one they are these are, are antigens that present on the uh, on the chromosome number six and there are four major loci three of them if the antigens are present on them this these are called hla type one and these are not very important ones again they can excite an immune response but they are very weak uh, stimuli for an immune response and then the, the fourth one is, is the DR locus. And this is a very strong uh, antigen, a very strong antigen that when spotted by the immune mechanism by other um, uh, leukocytes, especially lymphocytes, especially T lymphocytes, especially CD4 helper lymphocytes, uh, they excite a, a big row or a big fight or a big uh, war or a big battle, okay? 
once they see the, a, the, the, DR, the HLA DR class 2 antigen on, on this cell. Again, not every cell presents the DR2 antigen. Actually, some cells do not um, um, present this antigen except when it is inflamed. So expression of the HLA, um, and we will see this mechanism as well uh, right now. So expression of the DR uh, antigen or the type 2 HLA antigens uh, is not constant. Sometimes some cells uh, present them all the time. Some cells do not present them at all, but only present them if they are stimulated. Okay. So class 1 antigen have been found on corneal epithelial cells, stromal cells, which is the keratocytes, the occasional keratocytes and endothelial cells, while Langhan cells, which are dendritic cells of the mesenchymal origin located within the corneal epithelium, epithelium, the very innocent epithelium that we never worried about, these cells can present HLA type 2 antigen, and when they do that, they really uh, excite or provoke a strong uh, uh, immunological reaction. Okay, so what is the role of CD4 cells? So once the CD4 cells, which are again T cells, T, T helper cells, so once the, when I was a student, they, they, they were designated the name helper because of the, um, the um, uh, German word, and then they became helper cell, and then they became the very famous CD4 plus cells. Okay, so these cells, when they see the class two antigens, they become extremely excited and they become primed. And when they become primed, the CD4 cells, they do two main things. The first thing is that they produce interleukin-2. And this is the first cytokine, the first inflammatory mediator that is, uh, that is produced in this mechanism in the corneal allograft rejection interleukin 2 so this is the first thing so what does interleukin 2 does the interleukin 2 starts activating other cd4 cells for example if if a, a bunch of cd4 cells around the eye spots the hla uh, dr antigen and starts um, um, secreting or producing the interleukin 2 this interleukin-2 circulates in the blood to activate other CD4 cells. Okay, so this is one of the very important things that it does, the interleukin-2 uh, production. The interleukin-2 production activates other CD4 cells and activates as well cytotoxic T cells, like uh, CD8 uh, plus cells again. So these are cytotoxic cells that when activated, they come and attack directly cell to cell they come and attack directly the antigenic cell that carries the HLA-DR antigen. So these are killer cells, okay? And also the, the CD4 activates the B lymphocytes. So the CD4 cells, by expressing the interleukin-2, it activates other CD4 cells, it activates the killer cells, the T cells, and it activates the, the B cells as well. The B cells are for the humoral antibody long-term sort of uh, reaction. So what is the role of CD8 cells? CD8 cells, once activated, and it's, it is only activated by the interleukin-2, so it is not activated directly by the HLA-DR antigen on the antigen-presenting cells. So the CD8 cell can, can pass by the, 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 antigenic, uh, the antigen-bearing cell and not recognize it at all, except if there is production of interleukin-2 by the CD4 plus cells. Okay, so when, when there is interleukin-2, the CD8 plus uh, or cytotoxic or killer cells of the T lymphocytes become activated. And when they become activated, they do a very funny sort of reaction. Of course, they are called killer cells. So they go to the cell that uh, is, um, uh, is expressing the HLA-DR uh, uh, antigen and um, kills them, okay, either by engulfing them or other mechanism. But the very important thing that it does as well is that it activates other cells 
to produce or to express the HLA-DR antigen. And this is something very peculiar to the CD8 plus cells. And I am catching it head in the It is it is fueling the battle. It's fueling the battle more and more and more. It is they are the infantry. They are like like the uh, the soldiers, the 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 low rank soldiers. So they go to kill. They go to engage. They are the first liners. So they go to engage with the uh, antigen presenting cells, but at the same time they do um, they do stimulate the antigen cells, the antigenic cells, the the, the graft cells, the, the the foreign cells to express more and more HLA-DR antigens. So this is like a vicious circle that uh, that starts. Okay. So CD8 uh, plus T cells modulate the response by re releasing cytokines as well. But the cytokines that the CD8 cells produce are not uh, is not interleukin 2. They produce interferons, and interferon G is very very important. And this interferon G is the interferon that uh, stimulates the uh, antigenic cells or the the uh, foreign cells to express the HLA-DR antigen on them. And once they express the HLA-DR antigen on them, they stimulate CD4 plus cells again and again and again, and it's like a vicious uh, circle. So what's the role of B lymphocytes? B lymphocytes are like the big tanks, the big artillery. They do not engage in the very uh, beginning of the uh, battle, but they produce antibodies. And this, these antibodies enable uh, opsonization, complement binding, facilitation of anti antibody dependent cell mediated uh, uh, cytotoxicity with the K cell activity. So the antibody comes, comes to bind with the antigen and this antigen is the HLA-DR antigen. And by this binding, they either um, they do complement fixation or they activate some uh, cytotoxic cells like the K cell, uh, K uh, T cells. They come and eat only cells that has the antibody antigen complex uh, in, in made already. So. Um, so this is uh, what we call the immunological synapse. So whenever you have an immunological synapse, there are, there are other cells, there are T lymphocytes, killer lymphocytes, K cell activities, K cells that come and engulf only uh, the uh, cells that show this immunological synapse in place. So B lymphocytes is like a, a sort of a delayed response a little bit, but this is very important. So there you have it, the CD4 plus cells, the CD8 cells and the B lymphocyte. This is the pathology or the immunology. And and some would ask, why do we have to know exactly? We know the clinical signs and symptoms. We know the, the treatments and we all know the, the new treatments and the treatments that are successful, complications from the treatment, etc. So why do we have to know the pathology? And the reason is it's very important to know the pathology because, for example, if you can, if you can, and this is this is something that we cannot do until this very moment, but if you can block the CD4 cells from producing interleukin-2, the whole vicious circle would be cut. And even though you will have an immune system that recognizes the HLA-DR um, antigen on antigen-presenting cells, it will not be able to produce interleukin-2. Or if you do have interleukin-2 production and you have a, a, a drug or um, a pharmaceutical that is that blocks the effect of interleukin-2 or, for example, the interferon on the cells, on the uh, transplanted cells, then the whole mechanism, again, will be uh, disrupted. So this is something that we know to understand the mode of action of uh, future medications or current medications as well. If you're using something like uh, Cellcept or mycophenolate, it actually works by interacting with the receptors of the interferons. So you, you need to know this stuff, the, the pathology behind the rejection, so you can uh, justify uh, the modes of treatment, uh, especially nowadays. Okay, so is the anterior segment really immune privileged in spite of this mechanism that I've just uh, said? The, the, the answer is yes. Yes, it is. 
uh, immune privilege. So uh, how it is immune privilege? This the 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 next few set of slides will uh, will show. How? So the first mechanism. It was recently. Actually, this is not recently. This has been uh, for quite some time. Uh, it was recently shown that the injection of antigens into the anterior chamber induces a response called the arcade or the anterior chamber associated immune deviation. Simply, it is a down regulation of the immune system to prevent response. How does this happen? Some CD, some T cells, okay, that are called CD95 cells. Once you prime the CD4 plus cells around the eye, this CD4 plus cells, one of the things that they do, they produce interleukin. This is the first thing I told you at first. There are two things that they do. They produce interleukin-2, and interleukin-2 actually activates other CD4 cells. They activate CD8 cells, and they activate even the, the, the B cells, the B lymphocytes. But the other thing that they do is that they activate the production of a, a subset of cells, subset of T cells called the CD95 cells. And the spleen starts uh, producing these cells. And these cells are special forces cells. These are special brigade of cells that go directly to the tissues around the eye and sort of block the T lymphocytes from engulfing or engaging with the antigenic cells. So these are cells that we can call them, uh, uh, yani they, they do not work for the body, they, they work against the body. So they, these are double agents. So if you would, if you would consider the CD4 uh, cells as being the uh, espionage or being the intelligence community that actually spots the DR uh, antigen, spot on very, very early after transplantation and then starts to um, give this information in the form of interleukin-2 to, to other uh, lymphocytes and then call for the infantry for the real army, which is the CD8 uh, cells. Uh, and the CD8 cells, they have, they have this mechanism of increasing the production of HLA-DR uh, antigens on the antigen presenting cells to know, to know them and to see them much more clearly and attack them more. But there's a special brigade of cells that come and sort of stops or dampen down this, the, the, this mechanism. And these are the CD95 cells. These are produced. Uh, okay, I'm back. Uh, so where were we? Yes, the activation of CD95 cells in the spleen, dual brigade, these are the special cells that go to the, uh, um, the the tissues around the eye and start blocking the, the action of the CD8 plus cells or the uh, T killer cells. And this mechanism has been shown to decrease the reaction of the body against the transplanted cornea. And this is called the ACADE, the anterior chamber associated immune deviation. The, this is a mechanism, Rabbanus subhanahu wa ta'ala hattu, in order, why, why is this mechanism, has this mechanism been developed specially for corneal transplants? No. This mechanism is very, very uh, uh, much included in the pathogenesis and the pathology of a lot of uh, uveitis mechanisms. If, if, any, if any antigenic um, response or antigenic stimulus inside the eye, for example, any bacterial, viral, helminthic, whatever, um, uh, reaction results in uveitis, the normal immune mechanism would respond and would induce a very, very severe sort of reaction that will end up, after it goes away, it will end up with a lot of tissue damage. So with a single attack of uveitis, for example, herpetic uveitis, you can end up with total iris tissue loss or um, uh, occlusio pupillae from a single attack. So this mechanism has been put into place to dampen down the intraocular inflammation. 
So you don't you do not get a very severe sort of immunological response for a, a minor stimulus inside the eye that will lead eventually to loss of the integrity of the ocular tissue and would definitely affect vision. So the, the, the immune mechanism has like two modes of response, a very strong response everywhere in the body and a dampened down response inside the eye. And how does the, the body dampens down this response by the CD95 cells or the AK, the anterior chamber associated immune deviation mechanism? The second mechanism, which is which is very, very logic, is that any immune response that remains after the arcade will only serve as a minute antigenic load, a uh, response that will lead to tolerance. Like self-vaccination. Signs of corneal graft rejection, this is this is really not the, the, the issue or not the, the, the main aim. Um, of um, this presentation or this lecture but we all know it's epithelial rejection uh, either type 1 which is irregular elevated immune line that stains with fluorescein we rarely see this type 2 sub epithelial deposits and this is the very uh, common uh, epithelial rejection again again the Langhan cells which are the antigen presenting cells found on the epithelium of the donor graft they do not excite a response only in the epithelium so these do not lead to epithelial rejection these once they are they, they prime the cd4 cells can lead to a total graft rejection and total stromal and endothelial rejection again the stromal rejection although seen separately in animal models usually it is accompanied with endothelial rejection in in Endothelial rejection, we all know the cotyledoced line, the anti chamber reaction, the corneal edema. But again, again, the corneal edema has to be differentiated. The, the graft rejection, allogenic immuno, immunological rejection from graft failure, even if it comes uh, at a later stage or even years after uh, surgery. Signs of late graft rejection, just for a, a quick recap. And this is not the primary aim. The primary aim of this uh, presentation was the pathology and the immunology and the exact mechanism uh, of how uh, rejection. Happens. Treatment of corneal rejection, steroids, 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 systemic and topically, and cyclosporin A. Why, why am I saying cyclosporin A, which is rarely used now in corneal graft rejection? We use cyclosporin A in a lot of in a lot of things, but uh, it, it is one of the it is it's a natural metabolite of the fungus. Uh, and it is um, a natural antibiotic. Um, again, it, it suppresses the release and uptake of interleukin-2. So interleukin-2, interleukin-2, interleukin-2 starts everything uh, by exciting other CD4 cells, by exciting CD8 plus cells, and by exciting B cells as well. with Tofi.